King Solomon has come of age, and despite a rocky childhood, appears at the cusp of leading his house further towards greatness. A holy war led by the Pope saw Solomon follow him to Egypt as his ward. A war declared by a young emir not far from Sardinia showed he had both spirit and wisdom. And after coming of age, he has proven capable in communing with God himself through sacred visions brought under meditation. With the bonds of marriage now made with his wife, Duchess Rakaia of Granada, and a child on the way, things seem perfect. Yet in the back of his mind is the gnawing danger of stress, doubt, and even madness. For the House of Torres is one known for the unraveling of wits and wisdom as time goes by. Will Solomon rise to the future with careful rule, or let his inner demons out entirely? This is the ninth episode of a House Torres mega campaign, going from CK3 to Stellars. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy. We're gonna prepare a claim on his title. We need revenge. His nightmares will keep haunting us if we don't get revenge. We're gonna send our bishop to get a claim on him, and then we're gonna take his land. Praise St. Bridget, Rakoya has given birth to a perfect little daughter. Lately, I feel as I am constantly being distracted by lascivious thoughts and erotic fantasies. Yeah, because he got blue balls. That's why, blood. It happens. Uh, with all the hardships of my everyday life, it is all too easy to lose myself in daydreams and forget about reality. These desires are clearly interfering with my life. We'll try to stay focused. A plush carpet, vibrant and soft, arrives as a gift from Duchess Rakoya, our wife? The fuck's in that carpet? Why would she send me such an exquisite gift? I do not know. No, 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 no. No, this is a plot. She's plotting against us. We're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna sell it. It's probably poisoned. King Solomon, we have had our differences in the past, but don't you agree it's time to let bygones be bygones? Whatever is between us, can we start anew? All right, we're gonna reconcile with her. From all my evenings watching stars, I have seen with my own eyes what I have only heard of before. The stars move at different speeds and reverse their course at different times, but seemingly in large groups, depending on which celestial sphere they belong to. Indeed, with the right calculations, one can even predict their movement. He is a genius, but damn. My archbishop does not approve, of course. Leave the skies be. The celestial realm is for the clergy to know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about that. Kind of. Kind of curious. I think we're. I think we're gonna. We're gonna go. We're gonna look at the stars some more. My spy master has come with a grave news. While we do not know who, someone is plotting to kill me. And with that, let's launch our invasion of Amir Adfuns the Third. This is the man who, when he was but a child, and we. Oh, he's cancer. When he was a child, and we were a child. He declared a war upon us. It was our defining struggle that made us the man we became. And now, after many dreams have haunted us, we're gonna get our revenge. The Battle of the Walia of Menorca. Across the battlefield, I see Wadi atop his horse. I've always learned to try and get into a position of the enemy, no matter understanding how they think and how they prepare for their attacks. But with Wadi, I can't imagine anything past being disgusted by his religious views. We're open-minded though, so that's not really true. Mu'adiism is truly a plainly false religion. I stop to think, should I even try to learn his image of the battle? Yeah, we'll do it. As the battle progresses, I take some time to sit back from the combat and observe my forces and the tactical decisions I may need to take to ensure victory. During my time observing the army's strategic potential, I notice a handful of fighters from my own levies making significant progress on the flank of the enemy's charge. One individual particularly catches my eye as I watch them single-handedly take down four opponents on their own. Looking left to right, I observe the rest of my army and ponder the thought that I may need new, fresh blood in my ranks at some point. As I glance over at the young soldier fighting boldly, I wonder if I would know, uh, should consider their skills as a fighter. Yeah, bring him to me. Who is this man? He's not a very good, he's not an Ari fighter. Ignu de Portutura. All right, we just have to finish the siege. It should be an easy war. Ah, oh, we got a son. As the siege of the Wali of Ibiza comes to an end, I sit and follow the events that have occurred as I commanded the siege's strategic decisions. Were well, their defense is too weak, or my men or weapons too strong. Either way, it certainly feels like something was off. My liege, a lot of our fortification holdings still use some of the same technology, begins the marshal. We're, we're paranoid, so we'll invest in it. All right, we're gonna need to hire the Templars. We have to win this battle, or we are fucked. We're gonna lead it ourselves, though. Here we go. To win the war, and to get revenge upon our enemy. We're leading our own men. Aha. As the battle rages on, I realize there are multiple weak points in our front line that are particularly vulnerable to an enemy spearhead attack. Screaming at my men to cover the softened area, my voice breaks and I realize they will not be able to hear me. Quick, 
You need to come with me. I command them and usher them in the direction of the weak spot. As we arrive, an enemy has already begun changing into the vulnerable gap in the line, so I rally them in to brace for a coming charge. Whilst we hold, I hear an enemy general shouting a muffled command, followed by the groans of numerous enemy footmen. What was that sound? I think before a rain of spears and javelins begins to descend upon the shoulders of the enemy push. As projectiles slam into the men around me, one smacks past my head, excruciating close to penetrating my skull. As I turn in shock and see the same spear destined for the head lodged in the chest of a lifeless footman behind me, jarred and stunned, I wobble away from the enemy charge in a nauseating mix of fear and shock. That could have been me. He's about to get fucking traumatized. So let's fucking do it. I sit, paying only a little attention as the peasant finishes their tale of woe. Frankly, I barely even registered what they were thinking about. Oh man, he is not in mental shape after that. I like this story. You're probably some foreign spy. Oh no. The court around us goes utterly quiet, all eyes on the belittered commoner and me. Evidently, this wasn't the response they expected. We took the sun prisoner. We seized the brooch of our enemy. And we have forced them to give terms. We have divine guidance again. The Lord, he speaks to us often. More and more. There's an area in my domain where stories of ghosts abound. It is said some of the settlements in this area home to the so-called ghost towns where the locals claim to witness seeing spirits moving about. I've been feeling a little brave lately and fucking crazy. Yeah, let's do it. Uh-oh. We're gonna go hunt some ghosts. What can go wrong in our fragile mental state? For a long while now, there have been... I already read this one. Reveal yourself! Just as I am beginning to doze off, I saw them. I saw all the spirits marching here and there. My jaw dropped open. Such things few living people have witnessed. Yet there they were, walking around like the living. I was so excited that I accidentally slipped and landed face first on the floor. When I gained consciousness, my guards were relieved I hadn't injured myself, and they asked me what happened and why I was so excited earlier. I told them I'd witnessed, but they were confused. One guard said, there's nothing there, my lord. We saw nothing. The French are at war with the, the Holy Roman Empire, and as a tributary RP-wise, we have no choice what to accept. We will lead them ourselves. We are no coward. To fight another Christian in times like these is a waste, but we will honor our word. My wife is plotting to kill me after she wanted to wreck it. So I fucking knew it. It was that carpet. It was the fucking carpet. Remember the carpet? It was fucking poisoned. We knew it was poisoned. Schemers everywhere. That fucking fiend. We're gonna imprison her. Why can't we imprison her? Fuck. Our boy is not doing very well at this point. Oh, fuck. It's all too much. What worth is there in even trying? We're in the middle of dinner when it all just falls apart. I have to go through new records from Logodoro. I have to settle a dozen disputes. I have to. Are you all right, my liege? My friend Jedi Paulu cautiously voices his concern. We can become melancholic. We can become a confider. Or we can become wrathful. We're gonna become wrathful. We're gonna lose compassionate. The voices. Where my court deals only in lies and falsehoods, I have found those who claim to be willing to tell the truth. They live with me in my head. They say they know what truth is. Do they really know? We can run naked or we can become a lunatic. God damn, I had a feeling he'd be wild and uh, I'm not disappointed. You know, we pressure made a diamond but that diamond is starting to fucking crack at this point. Alrighty. We're a lunatic. It's always the good kings who lose it. Yes, it is. He started as a great king and... He's, he's a genius, but... His own intelligence and his own stress broke his fucking minds. It seems that not every servant of Duchess Rakoya's court is blindly loyal. The mom assures me that he is a way in. That a few coins in the right pocket would go a long way. We cannot fucking afford that. Oh no, the HRE's mega army hit us. So strong in the face of the enemy. My soldiers have fought valiant so far at the Battle of the Barony of Leuven, but are slowly growing tired as their foes push harder and harder in rage against their demise. After a prolonged period of combat and a strong enemy counter push, my men are stumbling around, exhausted and in dire need of motivation. Seeing the opportunity to deliver some inspiration, I step up to give my warriors a stirring speech to reinvigorate them and restore their drives to continue battling against a difficult foe. Once I step up, I begin to ponder what I might say as a few of my soldiers stop fighting to watch me in admirations. Take heed of my words, brave soldiers. 
After a summary of the common ground between me and my men and some motivational words about family, I start to notice a few of the soldiers nodding in agreement as the enemy slowly approaches. It won't stop them, but nice. Charge! We didn't lose all of our men. We actually retreated with a good amount of them. My scheme moves forward to flourish and swift communication is key. I'm an especially clever pigeon from the mom that could use an urgent matter to me and says sorry if the need arises. This is a really important moment for this grand campaign, by the way. Just heads up, guys. For the Mickey campaign, this war is actually the most important we've had so far. Because if they get Paris, the HRE will take all of France. With the passing of Emperor Ogadai, several successors have claimed the position of the Great Khan, with none of them recognizing the others. We are finally seeing the end of the Mongols as a unified empire. They got all the way to Venice. They may not be weak, but they no longer stand united behind a single universal ruler. Oh, fuck. All right, Chagatai in the east, the Golden Horde in the north, and Mongolia with all of Persia, most of Arabia, and all of the Byzantines. Solomon, my dear friend, I was once again reminded of your victory against Emir Adfun, so I decided to write a poem about your triumph, the Pope says, clearing his throat. The Spear of Sardinia e Corsica, a work of poetry dedicated to King Solomon's victory. When red-plumed war comes to his lands, all flashes of iron and shouted demands. His subjects prove grateful, for if they are not, they'll s soon see on which side they have fought. He becomes our best friend. Wow, we're best friends with the Pope. Hell yeah. My agents have prepared for weeks. The cook has been dry to look the other way. The poison has been acquired. The duck was gifted to Duchess Rokoy alone. It'll be rubbed with the poison and the bed of herbs will mask the smells it has served. Thanks to the duck and the poison vial, Duchess Rokoya, our wife, is finally dead. Even better, in her death throes, a bone got stuck in her throat. Now it is unclear who killed her at all. More than anything, my quest to be a learned man is teaching me how much I do not know yet know. But more, there must be so much knowledge that has been lost to the ages. As books fall apart, their languages are forgotten. Perhaps I contribute to make a new translation of one of the classic works. Euclid's Mathematics or Ptolemy's Alchemist? What are Euclid's mathematical treatises? We should also be able to start the other war. Yes, we can. Call the banners. We will take the rest of Miorica. Oh, holy shit. His father died literally when I... No, no, no. His father just died when we declared the war. Fuck, the stress of the declaration killed him. Our son calls us to war against the Count of Malak. He's declaring war on our son, of course. We will send troops. We'll, we'll, we'll wait on our own war. We're going to try and assist our son here. God damn, poor kid. He's like us. His childhood is going to be a very rough one. Oh, they're trying to chase our son's army. We're going to get there in time. Nope, they're running. Destroy the army of the man who dares to fight our son. As the battle rages on, I find myself in a small pocket of close quarters combat. With the help of my men, we smash the opposition with the east. But the focus of the attention was on me, who relaxedly escaped the fight without a scratch. Whilst I did manage to get some hits in on the enemies. I arrived back at my castle after a long, lonely walk, and every year, and every year older. I was born 29 years ago today. The older I get, the more I cherish the relationships I cultivated over the years. So it saddens me when I have here not heard from you, Sobia. I trudge along to my chambers, lonely and impeding my ladies if you want to hear a clang and hush whispers. This isn't a surprise party, but we're gonna get the fuck out. We're gonna jump out the window and miss our surprise party. We defeated their armies! Good. Completely massacred them. Let's finish the war of our enemy, and then our son will finish his war. And we've won the war. Amir Ad Funes has been gained as a hostage, and we will end the war and take the last of the Miorca Islands. We'll take Ibiza. Let's march our army to assist our son and end this war. As I walk outside during a foggy night, an apparition suddenly appears in a booming voice. It speaks, Solomon, it has been too long. It is my father. King Alessandro, how I believe to have died of old age. His vile caliph Alblarion has called a jihad against the people of Serenica in Egypt. Oh boy, it's a jihad. This is the first jihad of the game. We're not going to lose though. We have 150,000 soldiers to send against them. We'll pledge our men for it. We'll fight against the heathens. 
indulging myself in combat against some of the in enemy's levies, I find myself slashing through their weaker, less trained forces with ease. Cutting down a few enemies every few minutes, the soldiers alongside me are equally thrilled at their unmatched skills give them easy kills. Eventually, I find myself clashing with a slightly shorter, skinnier opponent who rushes me frantically. Oh, no. I step aside and allow him to fall past me, stumbling to the ground. As they stand themselves up, their helmet slips off, revealing the face of a boy no older than 16 years old I'm not a single hair grown on his face. Do I subdue him without killing him, or do I cut him down like the rest? We were once a compassionate man, but we're not anymore. We're going to cut him down. There was a time King Solomon would have given that child respite. Not anymore. Our son has it in hand. I think it's time for us to send troops to the crusade. Fight the heathens ourselves. Well, after fighting for over a year now in Iberia, we are sailing to Egypt to fight the heathens even more. We haven't been home in a long, long time. Yeah, we, we just killed a child. Yeah, we did on the battlefield. My best friend, Pope Innocentius, approaches me with a big smile on his face. My dearest friend, we finally see each other. I feel like we need to spend more quality time lately. Well, maybe you'd be willing to try something new with me. I know just a thing to distract your mind, restore your body, and lift your spirits. Well, what about some fishing? The quiet of nature all around and nothing but you, your prey, good drinks, and good company. Damn, the Pope wants to go fishing with us. Fuck yeah, he's our best friend. That's, that's wholesome as fuck. Just a, just a fishing trip between our, our, our crazy king of Sardinia and the Pope. They're just going fishing during the crusade. We're not, we're not gonna wait around, we're going for Cairo. For a year, I've been recently uh, receiving frequent visits from my father, King Alessandro, day in and day out. He is adamant that no one is allowed to see him, but people are starting to worry. How am I supposed to focus on my stick horse when he acts like this? Leave me alone. We're haunted by the dead. I took Lissandro out playing with a bow, and to my surprise, he ran into a wounded doe. He did not hesitate in the slightest to bring it down. Damn, son. All right. Teach him to fight a bit. He's clearly capable. He, yeah. He became diligent. Oh my God. And he got three prowess. Our ambitious, diligent son, who is already a duke from his mother's title, who he murdered. So, yeah, hopefully he doesn't find out about that. If Lissandro is clearly a really strong, good leader, he's going to probably go crazy as well. Let's be honest. The tradition continues. The slaughter at Cairo. Eight of us got away. My dear friend. And it has come to my attention that you regularly engage in some most unusual forms of prayer. I demand that you end this ridiculous practice and do appropriate penance for this misinterpretation of our faith right after our fishing trip with him too. I mean, come on, man. What does do us? He doesn't understand. You know why? God doesn't talk to him. He doesn't have God talking to him. We have God talking to us all the time. We should probably be the Pope here if anyone, I mean, honestly. This, the Lord doesn't even talk to him. <laughs> and he's telling us to stop talking to God. Madness. He's the crazy one. We're not crazy. He's crazy. Fuck, we're out of chancellors. Uh-oh. Has everyone just left our court because we're crazy? Probably. But we don't have a chancellor right now. Overwhelmed by stress. Oh, no. Solomon, you tragic fucking dude. The first sign that something is wrong is the sharp pain in my chest. We had a fucking heart attack. I stagger towards a wall for support as the pain spreads down my left arm and I grow lightheaded. I, I don't have time for this. I have things to do. As I try to take a step, I collapse to the floor. I try to cry for help, but the only sound that escapes me is a strangled whimper. The pain in my chest only builds and builds and darkness overtakes my vision. I can feel my heart stutter. After losing his army in Egypt, after fighting against his inner demons for years, King Solomon died of a heart attack. King Solomon, of course, got rest in the arms of the Lord at 32 years of age. He died from stress. Although quite famous for his short intellect, he could not outsmart death. What an interesting character though, holy shit. We're a King Lissandro. We own Granada, Majorca, Sardinia, and Corsica. We are ambitious. We are diligent, we are curious, and we have a very sharp mind. The House of Torres continues 
to have madmen, men and boys who, when they are young, show great prominence, but as they grow older, their mind begins to warp. At this point, many in Europe might think our family is cursed, that we've lost the faith of God, that we say many of our leaders talk of speaking directly with him himself. We're going to get trained by the Pope. We're going we're gonna to become a ward of the Pope like our, like our father. That I will do. With the Mongols split, the HRE controlling most of Central Europe, the Pope who trained our father is still alive, and yet again, a young king inheriting far too early. This is where we will end for today.